Carl, I've heard that you've dreamed about going to Mars ever since you were a little kid playing Chinese handball in, in, in Brooklyn. Um, do you still think about going to Mars today? Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I'm involved in trying to uh, decide what the best way to go is. I mean, in a sense, we are going to Mars. We've sent uh, splendidly successful robotic missions to Mars, especially Mariner 9, the first uh, spacecraft ever to orbit another planet and uh, the two Viking orbiters and landers. And at this minute, uh, a very capable, although in a way modest, uh, mission called Mars Orbiter is uh, on its way to Mars, which will be able to photograph places on the planet down to uh, 10 meters resolution. I mean, very little pieces. Look at a whole new regime on Mars. But what most people mean when they talk about uh, going to Mars is sending people. Right. Sending people is expensive. The only reasonable way to do it in the near future, next few decades, is internationally as a real equal partnership with the United States, with Russia especially because of their enormous space capability, the Europeans, the Japanese, and maybe uh, Canada, China, a few, other, a few other nations. In our search for finding out what the universe is like, do you think it's inevitable for the human race to leave this planet? Uh, if we don't destroy ourselves, I, I think it's inevitable. And there's no question that since we come from hunter-gatherer ancestors, since we are wanderers, nomads by genetic predisposition, and the Earth is all explored, naturally there's a call to at least some of us to go exploring right. elsewhere. And it's just built into us. It's the most natural thing in the world. I think we'll be on the moon, uh, we'll be on Mars, We'll be on the moons of planets in the outer solar system. We'll be on comets. We'll be tiptoeing from comet to comet off to the stars. Inside, inside space. space. Inside, inside space. space. Inside. inside space.